In this video, I am going to show you how to install Python, Homebrew, PIP ENV, and uh, PyCharm on a Mac OS X computer. This is being filmed in April of 2021. So for any of you watching this in the distant future, this might be different from how it should work. Um, say if you know we're looking year, couple years in the future watching this video. There are a couple different resources that I'm going to use in this video. And one of my favorites is this, the Hitchhiker's Guide to Python and this Installing Python 3 on Mac OS X uh, article. If you read through it, it really helps. Um, I'm actually going to be following most of the steps in this video or in this article um, on this video. And the first one is installing the uh, Xcode command line tools or the OSX uh, GCC installer. I prefer just installing the command line tools. You can click on here and it'll take you to the Apple developers page where you can install tools for uh, working with Apple products like Mac OS X. And I have it pulled up here because I've already logged into my account and everything. Um, I don't usually download the beta um, versions. You can see command line tools for Xcode 12.5 beta 3. Um, I'm just going to go with the stable version, which is going to be right here. Command line tools for Xcode 1214. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to click the download button. And I'm on Firefox, so it's going to ask for my permission. And we'll see what happens. After the DMG file has downloaded, I can go to my finder and my downloads. And I'm just going to double click on the command line tools. It might give me some sort of message about installing something from the computer, but it doesn't seem like that. So I'm going to just go ahead and uh, double click on the package and it's going to take me to the installer page. I'm just going to kind of zoom through all this stuff. Yes, I agree. It's going to install. It's going to be 2.5 gigabytes. And it shouldn't take too long, but I might stop the video if it does take a while. With the command line tools, package installed and ready to go. I am now back in the tutorial where we actually got the link for the command line tools. And the next thing is to install homebrew. Um, it looks like that this link is or this command to install homebrew is up to date. But in the recent months, I thought it was out of date. So what I usually do is I usually just go to homebrew.sh. This is the home page for homebrew. And I just copy it straight from there. This is kind of the official install this, you know, run this command if you want to install homebrew. And so I copy this and I will open a terminal. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to paste it in there and I'm going to press enter. Okay, so it says it's going to install all these files. It says these scripts will install the following new directories will be created. Great, so we're going to hit enter. And homebrew might take a second. After homebrew has been installed, we need to tell our computer where our homebrew version of Python is going to exist. And to do that, we need to work on our path variable. And the path variable is really a user configured um, piece of information that tells the computer where to look when searching out softwares, programs, and executables. And so if I go to my terminal that I have open, um, I haven't added this file just yet, but if I echo my path variable and I hit enter, you're going to see user local bin, user bin, bin, user s bin, and s bin. That's the order of locations that my computer is going to look when I'm trying to search for something. So if I say which Python 3, you're going to see user bin Python 3. So right now there's no Python in my user local bin, but there's a Python in my user bin and then there's Python 3. Okay. So in the new Max, they use ZSH rather than bash and for each user, they should configure their own .zshrc file. I've already made one, but I haven't put anything in it. So I'm going to uh, nano tilde slash 
dot zshrc. This is the name of my file right here. And we are going to open it up and you can see there's nothing inside of it. All I'm gonna do is take this line right here, this executable line, I'm gonna copy it and I'm gonna paste it in there. So what is this doing? It's exporting, so changing the path variable now to user local opt python x lib x bin and then whatever my current path is. So the path that we just outputted, the one that we just saw with the different lists of directories, that is gonna just get tacked onto the back of this location right here. So if I do control X and then Y to save the changes, and I press enter, cause I wanna keep the name of the file the same. I'm just gonna hit enter. Now I'm gonna run source and I'm gonna call the name of the file. And I'm gonna hit enter. You shouldn't see any sort of output. And we're gonna run that same command again, echo path variable. So tell me what the path variable looks like. And you can see now we've got user local opt python lib x bin before the rest of our path that currently existed before we just ran that, uh, that code. Now, what I just did is not necessarily the safest way. If I was to run source again, um, you would see that the path variable gets all long and tangled up and you have repeating directories. There's much more sophisticated ways to do this, but just for time's sake and just to get the Python up and running, this is the best way to do it um, if you're just, just solely focused on getting Python up and running, not trying to build out you know, a very customized uh, shell environment. Okay, now we're ready to do something cool. Let's actually use brew to install Python. And the line is right here. So it says now we can install Python 3 with a simple brew install Python. And this might take just a second, but you're gonna see that it's uh, locating a lot of files online. It's going to update brew. A lot of the times it updates brew before it does anything. Um, but then after that, it goes right to downloading Python. So this will take a second. I'm going to pause the video and come back right when it's finished. Python has now successfully been installed uh, to my computer using brew. And we can actually check by running the which Python command again. So which Python, I'm actually gonna do which Python three. And you can see user local bin Python three. If you read the output from the downloading, um, when you do brew install Python 3, it says that it's gonna install it to user local bin, and we can actually go to user local bin, so I can just run a CD, user local bin, and if I run an LS, you can see I have a Python 3, a Python 3.9, a bunch of different Python 3.9s, and you're like, okay, well, why did it install it there? But in reality, if we do LS list all, LA, you can see that these are all sim links, like I said, to um, the seller folder where Python is located. So seller, Python 3.9, 3.9.4, bin, Python, oh, PyDocs, I grabbed the wrong one. But if we look right there, that's the Python in question. And so the Python 3 located in user local bin is actually um, simply pointing to the Python in seller Python at 3.9, 3.9.4, bin Python 3. Okay, this is the brew installed Python 3. Now, whenever we run Python, if I just run a, um, I'm gonna clear this output. I'm also gonna go to my root directory so you can see I can call it from anywhere. I can say Python 3. And you can see, yep, we're running Python 3.94. And I'm gonna exit. Now, something we haven't talked about is pip and pip comes pre-installed when you install Python through brew and pip is just a package manager. So it's gonna be used to go to um, PyPy or some repository that you've set up. Usually it's pypy.org and that's where you're gonna actually get your Python tools, you know, um, different, different modules and packages um, that we'll cover later on in different, different videos. But I can also check the same thing as I did which Python, I can say which pip three, and it'll say user local bin pip three. Once you have made it to the end of this uh, first tutorial that we've been working through, you're gonna get to a section that's called uh, pip env in virtual environments. 
Now, PIP ENV in virtual environments are just another tool on top of uh, Python. So we just installed a uh, version of Python to work from that was separated from the system-wide Python that comes pre-installed with the software. Now we're going to install a tool to help us further isolate that version of Python from our project so that every time we create a new project, we're going to create a new instance of Python so that whatever we do to it throughout our project, whether we add new files or create new tools or download tools, um, whatever we do is going to be isolated to that one instance so that if you have, you know, say four or five projects and they all use the same tool, but maybe different versions of that tool, all of your programs across your system will still work because they're not interacting with those versions of the tools. Only the single instance of the tool or Python that you're working with for that project, it all gets in contained through PIP ENV. Installing PIP ENV is super easy. We're just going to use the same PIP3 that we downloaded with our brew. And we're going to say PIP3 install PIP ENV. And mine's going to show that I already have it. I've already downloaded it once. So if I say which PIP ENV, it's going to say user local bin PIP ENV. The final thing that we need to download is the programming environment. Um, I personally love to use PyCharm. I think that it's a, a great uh, IDE or integrated development environment, but uh, that's really just for my preference. It's what I like to use. It's what I've been using since I first started uh, coding with uh, Python. You really can use any text editor you want. Um, I think PyCharm has a lot of really cool um, features and plugins. Now there are plenty of other um, environments, programming environments that also have awesome plugins. Um, you know, auto complete, all the special hotkeys and things you can do. Um, but sometimes I also find myself programming in just Sublime Text. Um, but PyCharm is really where I like to control my uh, larger projects and things. So. Before I go ahead and just install it, I want to show you how you'll know how to install it with brew. You can say brew search, and then I'm looking for PyCharm. So I'll say PyCharm, and brew is going to pop up the available um, softwares for me. And so this is what I'm really looking for is PyCharm CE for the community edition. So I'm going to say brew install cask. And then I'll say PyCharm. Oh, PyCharm. Make sure I spelt it right. And then I'm going to put CE. And then I'm going to hit enter. And this might take a little while because PyCharm is a uh, um, decent sized software. So I will cut this video off and uh, start it back up in just a minute. Awesome. So PyCharm is now uh, installed. And I can actually go to my little launch pad and you can see right here that PyCharm has been installed. And so I can just click on that and it's going to go ahead and open up a new project. Um, yep, we're gonna open because it's the first time opening. Uh, no, I don't really want any of this stuff. I confirm that I have read and gave you all my data. Yes, you can have all my information. Ooh, this is a new screen I haven't seen. Um, projects, uh, basically we're going to do create new project and this is the uh, important part right here. You got to name your project, we'll say uh, project test and I'm going to click pip env, okay? So we just went through all that process to download uh, Python and pip env so we want to make sure that we're using the pip env. You can use virtual environments, you can use conda. Um, I, I use pip env, it's just what I like to use and that's why I'm going over all this stuff. So pip env, click, and you can see user local bin python 3.9. It's going to be named uh, project test and like I said, by doing this, we're creating a whole new instance of python. So yes, it's, we're going to be building the base interpreter from the user local bin python 3.9, but it's going to be located in a different um, a different location, a virtual environment. Um, 
So if I do create, you'll see that it's gonna create this project and I can actually show you that the Python instance is a different instance of Python here in just a moment. Um, I recommend not um, trying to don't show those, especially if you're new to PyCharm. These tip of the day, uh, little window that pop up, they can be a little annoying, but I actually really find them to be um, helpful. And you can just like kind of scroll through all of it and, and just like learn one little new thing every time you open PyCharm up. And um, I think that that's a really, really cool little feature. So I'm going to close this. Anyways, we've got our project and then we've got all of our um, code. Okay. I can take a look here. See, you can see user carterash dot local share virtual environments project test, and then this is our instance of Python right here. Okay, so that's one way to see it. I could also go to my terminal and I could say which Python three, and you can see that rather than showing me user local bin, it shows me this location, and that's because I've created a virtual environment and now my Python is safe and my project is safe. So now anything I do to my project, whether I destroy the version of Python, maybe I go into here and I decide, oh, I'm gonna delete um, this whole entire email tool right here. I'm just gonna delete that whole thing. Yes, it might cause a lot of issues, but it's not destroying the version of Python that I have on my local computer. So I could simply just delete this project and start a whole new one and start with a fresh instance of Python. So that's all I was really trying to get to in this video is getting Python set up on the Mac computer. And um, I'll have the link to the article that I used and um, the link to the brew and even to PyCharm's homepage as well if you wanna check that out before you go ahead and, and start downloading everything. Um, I hope this video was helpful and um, thanks.